Hello everyone and welcome to another vlog. This vlog is going to be a really exciting one. I get so thrilled to film the spooky season vlog that I do every year. I actually, I say every year, but I'm pretty sure last year was the first year I did a proper spooky season vlog. And I love Halloween and I wish we celebrated it more where I live. So for those of you who don't know, hello, I'm Christy. Hi, welcome. I live in Australia and right now in Australia, in the Southern Hemisphere, it is not autumn. <laughs> it is spring. But regardless, we're going to be watching some spooky movies, doing some Halloween themed baking and just having a good Halloween-y time. Today, first of all, what I'm going to be doing is reading The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. Let me go grab my copy. I love this book so much. We're going to be reading it this month over on Patreon for our book club. I think, honestly, it is my favorite Halloween-y read. Like, either this or Coraline. It's going to be a good spooky time, so let's get reading. <laughs> forget how brilliantly this is written. I think the first line of this book is one of my favorite opening lines of all time and the very first line of the graveyard book is there was a hand in the darkness and it held a knife and I oh I love that so much like it's so creepy it has such a, a sharp immediate image of this almost dismembered image of this hand in the darkness holding a knife it's really creepy. The graveyard book is about a young boy whose name is Bod. His family is murdered by this scary antagonist whose name is Jack and Bod ends up miraculously escaping and he waddles away from the home and avoids being murdered as well and he goes up to the local graveyard where the ghosts of the graveyard agree to raise him. I know that Neil Gaiman did a lot of research into many different kinds of graveyards. He had the idea for this book when he was a father and his like son was a little toddler and the only sort of like park or garden they had near their house was this local graveyard and so his son would ride his little tricycle around the graveyard and Neil Gaiman got the inspiration for this book from that image of his child on his little tricycle going around the graveyard. However, it took Neil Gaiman 20 years after that point to write this book. This book, I think, came out in 2008. I'm gonna cozy on down and keep reading this. Hello, Voice of a Christie here to bring you a brief intermission. Do you guys want to know what's scarier than ghosts or ghouls? Why dropping and shattering your phone, of course, which is why the spooky sponsor of today's video is Casetify. I put so much research into finding my phone case. I wanted something that was cute and interesting, something that would actually fit an Android phone because good Android phone cases can be really hard to find, and also something that was Christie proof because I am a clumsy human being and I drop my phone way more than a person. Should. So I ordered this case and the day it arrived Casetify reached out to me and asked if I wanted to do this integration. I opened up my case and I loved it and I thought it was wonderful so I said yes absolutely I'd love to talk about these cases more. Casetify have actually sent me some more cases to show you guys. Open up this guy. Let me show you the cases that Casetify sent me. One of the things I particularly love about Casetify is that they have cases available for my phone type. I have an S22, as I said, it can be really hard to find nice quality Android cases and Casetify have so many of them. All of your favorite Casetify cases are available for Android, whether that is the Impact case, which has a range of wonderful designs or the Ultra Impact case for extra drop protection. Casetify really has so many cute and interesting designs. There are so many to pick from from, and the cases are wonderful quality and also the impact cases are made from 65% recycled and plant-based materials as well. Casetify has released new cases for the S22, Z Flip and Pixel. So if you'd like to grab a lovely new phone case, go to casetify.com slash Jones to get 15% off your new phone case for Android. It is a few days since I think I last vlogged. I've now read a chunk of the graveyard book and I'm getting into the Halloween-y spirit in bits and bobs. Last year I filmed a Halloween vlog and I made this really cute little tiny tiny pumpkin that I put in my apartment. I don't feel like I should carve a really big pumpkin because it's just going to sit inside and it's just going to 
get gross really quickly, but I had a lot of fun carving the little tiny pumpkin last year and I couldn't find them this year, which is a shame. Today is the day I've been really excited for because today is the day I'm gonna be doing some Halloween-y baking. And I do feel like I kind of need to make up for last year a little bit because last year, last year I tried to make these like ghost meringue things. They're supposed to be like cute and swirly and like adorable and have little faces on them. However, I tried to make them and they did not work very well. Turns out I am very bad <laughs> at making meringues. Turns out I do not know in any way how to make meringue. They tasted good, they tasted, they, they tasted fine, but they did not have the volume that ghosts are supposed to have, so it didn't quite work out. But this year I do have a bunch of fun Halloween baking stuff that I can't wait to try. I've got all my ingredients, I made some little chocolate mouths for the little ghosty things I'm gonna make today. That's in the fridge and they're ready to go. We can now get started on the spooky baking. Let me pull up the examples of what I wanna make today. I'm so excited. We've got three things we're gonna be making today. Number one, we're gonna be making these little pumpkin shaped apple pies. I am mostly gluten free, not entirely gluten free, not entirely dairy free, but like gluten and dairy reduced anyway. I'm gonna be making these with gluten free flour. So I'm gonna be making the pastry from scratch. The next one is gonna be these spooky little strawberry ghosts. I've already made some little mouths for them. Last night I melted some chocolate and then just like dabbed them on to baking paper. And then on top of that, last thing I'm gonna make is these little peanut butter spider cookies. I have the little fake eyes I got them yesterday. These I thought were sold out. I was so sad yesterday in Coles. I was like looking for these and it turned out that just the first row of these were sold out. So I had to go like digging behind the shelf to find them, but I did find them. They're adorable. I'm excited to use them. They're gonna look so cute and creepy. We're gonna kick off with the pastry for the apple pie pumpkin. They're not, I'm gonna get confused with the name. They are not pumpkin pies. They are apple pies in the shape of pumpkins. I'm gonna kick off with those making the pastry because I know now from experience that the pastry needs 30 minutes to cool. And last time I tried to make pasties with homemade pastry, I was an impatient human being. I did not wait. It was not the best decision from me. I'm gonna make the pastry for this first and then I will make the apple cinnamon insides for the apple pies and then all of those can cool down before I put them in the oven. This is a very dark shot, but incidentally, I, in addition to owning the physical copy of the graveyard book, I also own the audio book. One grave in every graveyard belongs to the ghouls. Wander any graveyard long enough and you will find it. Water stained and bulging with cracked or broken stones, scraggly grass or rank weeds about it, and a feeling, when you reach it, of abandonment. If the grave makes you want to be somewhere else, that is the ghoul gate. There was one in Bod's graveyard. There is one in every graveyard. Pastry is all complete. It is now in the, oh, I said cupboard then. It is now in the fridge. We don't currently have cinnamon, but we do have cinnamon sticks, which I would like to use. They smell so good. Cinnamon stick. There we go. Fingers crossed this is gonna be good. remember the last time I peeled an apple. I think I must have been a child the last time I did it. I don't tend to eat a lot of apples generally because I don't love them. Here's a fun fact. I don't really like apple pie very much. Like I, I remember having it a lot as a kid and I remember always finding the apple really acidic and um, something about the texture was really gross to me and I just sort of really, really didn't enjoy it because it just felt like kind of gross to eat. I didn't mind regular apples as much. I had braces as a teenager. I stopped eating apples when I had braces and then just like never really ate apples again. So I have a bit of an interesting <laughs> relationship with apples. I made a 
batch of apple cinnamon tea cakes, but they were red apples, so they were sweet. And I realized that actually, no, I do like desserts with apple in it. I think I just don't like green apples, like Granny Smith apples. These are the apples that you're usually supposed to bake with because they are more sour and acidic. So I think they're supposed to have more contrast with the sugar that you put into baked goods. So I am kind of excited today to see how I find these apple pies, to see if I like them, to work out essentially if apple pie is good with red apples, I think it's going to be. This one next, so they can go in the fridge, then the strawberry ghosts, then the peanut butter cookies, and then back to making the pumpkin apple, pumpkin shaped apple pies. <laughs> updates. I have the tiniest little cut on my finger from chopping apples. I'm fine. It was like a very small graze. Second update. I've just popped the apple filling in the fridge and I tasted a little bit of it. It's so good. It's so very good. It honestly tastes a little bit like custard. Like it is delicious. Don't understand why people are using green apples to make apple pie. Like I know, I, I'm so sorry. Maybe this is a really divisive take, but the thing I just made tasted absolutely wonderful. I'm now gonna make the strawberry white chocolate ghosties. Let's clean the kitchen. I think that washing the strawberries, like putting water on the strawberries is probably going to affect the chocolate. So I'm going to just pat them dry before I put them in. And then really all we have to do is take the strawberries, put it in the melted chocolate. That is the plan. That should be fine. It says to cook it until the edges are brown and we're not quite there yet, so I think we'll just wait maybe two more minutes. <laughs> We are now currently on the final stretch of our baking adventure. I can feel myself fatiguing, but we're almost there. The ghosties are done. The cookies are done. Actually, I need to push down the centers in a second so that there's a spot for the spiders to sit. And I am just about to go and make the apple pies. I made a little stencil. This one should be the right size, I'm hoping. Popping them in the oven and then decorating the cookies. And we are almost done with all of our Halloween baking today.
my goodness we are all done <laughs> look at it <laughs> look at this uh, I have had the best time making these like it was so much fun and nothing went wrong Which is great, which is very different. We had a very small a very small cut on my finger But aside from that everything was really really good. So yay. Let's now give this a go Oh, I'm so proud of this. It looks so cute I've gotten crumbs everywhere because I just tried to take a thumbnail photo because I don't have a thumbnail photo for this video yet And I was like, well, we might as well pose <laughs> with my little pastry pumpkin. Okay, let's It's pretty good. That was really good. So the pastry is a little bit crumbly and probably could be sweeter, but because there's so much sugar and everything else I made, look, there's so much chocolate here. I think it's good that it's not as sugary. I put a little bit of sugar in it and no salt, so it's supposed to be like a dessert short crust pastry, but oh my God, the apple is amazing. Like cooking it, as a red apple instead of a green. I know I've gone on about this so much in this video, but I am convinced. Cooking it with a cinnamon stick, this tastes like custard. Like it's, there's no dairy in here, but it genuinely tastes like custard, like it's so good. Let's try the little strawberry. Look at his angry little face, I'm so sorry. And finally, this little guy, I'm so proud. Mmm, that's really good. Okay, as far as Halloween baking is concerned, this is way, way, way more successful than last year. I'm gonna put all the recipes in the description down below. All of these were really easy to make. They were just quite time consuming. So it took a while <laughs> to do all of that baking, but I love this time of year because as soon as it gets to Halloween and Christmas, I just do heaps of baking and it brings me so much happiness and so much joy. I am so happy and so fulfilled, albeit a little bit tired. So now I'm gonna go watch The Nightmare Before Christmas, which is the one Halloween movie which I have to watch every single year. Um, and I'm gonna watch that now. It has been a few hours since I last checked in with you. We ate dinner, Tyler ate his little apple pie. I'm so, I'm so proud of them. I think they turned out really well. I feel quite tired now. I had a really lovely day off just baking and enjoying the halloween -y spirit. I really had a lovely day today. I think I'm up to chapter five of the graveyard book which is the dance macabre. <laughs> I, I did a little short poetry type video last year around Halloween-y time um, and I referenced the dance macabre. Neil Gaiman pronounces it as dance macabre but my brain tells me it's dance macabre. I have no idea how you're actually supposed to pronounce this but I made a reference to it in that little poem thingy that I did and I put it on my website and it's quite funny because even still, even though it's been like a year, every couple months someone will email me and tell me that I've spelled dance wrong. <laughs> Which is quite funny because it's it, it's 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 supposed to be spelled with an S. It's not my fault Although I would not put it past myself to have spelling mistakes <laughs> Literally just gonna spend the rest of the night reading the graveyard book and enjoying more of the things that I made today I hope you guys enjoyed this cozy Halloweeny vlog and also a huge thank you to everyone over on patreon for supporting My channel and the things that I make take care everyone and I will see you next time. Bye-bye